Hey guys, Jared Wesley here, and you know what? It's that time of the week. It's lecture time. This week we're gonna talk about candlestick reversals. A lot of you guys kind of understand uptrends and downtrends pretty well, but what you don't understand very well are the transition phases, the stages one and the stages three, when stocks are moving into a downtrend or moving into an uptrend. And a lot of people also, they're so interested and so focused on being the first person in a trade that they get in too soon because they lack the necessary confirmation that they need to see if a stock is really going to bounce or if it's really going to drop. So today we're going to talk pretty much about all charts. All right. It's basically just charts, charts, charts today. Um, and we're going to look at some of these reversals and how they form these overlapping bars, these bottoming tail bars. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a very, very important lecture. Uh, because it really determines where you're going to get into a trade and where you should likely get out of a trade. So it's a pretty high level, hardcore technical um, type talk today. Uh, and I recommend you stick around for the whole thing because again, it's, it's pretty detailed, it's pretty in depth. Um, so anyway, I think it's a great lecture. You're gonna learn a lot and hopefully it'll make you a better trader. If you like these videos, click that like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. I am Jared Wesley. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is understanding candlestick reversals. So this is kind of a multifaceted lecture, okay? Uh, and what I mean by that is a lot of traders are very good at making money in stage two and stage four. Stage two is the uptrend, stage four is the downtrend. And then we have those transition phases, right? Stage one and stage three, and then the phases between them, right? So a lot of traders do great when the market is trending, Okay, and obviously they should, right? But when the market isn't trending or the stock's not trending, it's a bit more challenging. So we're gonna look today at where stocks reverse, but we're gonna get more granular than that. This isn't some um, you know, double bottom retest lecture or something like that, even though a couple slides will look into that, but we're gonna talk about level and depths of retracements and the sloppiness or the cleanliness of a retracement or where a stock is retracing or why a stock should or why a stock shouldn't bounce. Okay, um, so it, there's, there's quite a bit to it. Um, there's not a ton of slides, maybe 10 or 15 slides, but we're gonna go deep into some of these bars um, and we're gonna look at them and, and why stocks do what they do. Um, and a, one thing I wanna comment, and I'll, I'll continue this theme throughout it, you do not have to be the first person in to make money. There's this ego trip with traders like, well, I got in right at the bottom, ha ha ha. Well, who cares? As long as you hit your target, that's all that really matters, okay? And sometimes being the first one in is really the worst time to be in because it's the most aggressive time and you're the closest to flipping a coin. Our goal is to get farther away from flipping a coin. We want to get as certain and sure as possible when we take a trade and we don't want to be quote unquote flipping a coin all the time. Um, so we're going to look at this and we're going to look at congestion. We're going to look at overlap and we're going to look at bottoming. I mean, it's, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. Okay. So let's dig in. No. When will the insanity stop this week? Or uh, I just thought, you know what, let's take a break this week. So analyzing candlesticks and candlestick reversals. Okay. So retracement comments, guys, a reversal candles potency is measured by the depth or level of penetration into the prior candle. That's not new to you. You've heard those words before, right? When we talk about the level and depth of retracement, that's what we mean. In fact, to piggyback, we talked last week about 100% retracements, 25% retracements, 50% retracements, right? So this is a, a, in a way, piggybacking off of last week a little bit. Um, so a reversal candle's potency is measured by the depth or level of penetration. So if you penetrate 90% into a prior bar, don't worry, we'll see some examples here shortly. Well, that's very, very potent, right? So if you have a wide range red bar and the next bar is a wide range green bar that takes out 90% of the red bar, you're giving the edge to the buyers right there. Okay, so we'll talk about that in more detail in a second. Tails on a candle either increase or decrease supply. Topping tails increase and bottoming tails decrease, 
right? Think about it. supply is just another um, word for sellers, guys. Okay, so topping tails or tails either increase or decrease the amount of buyers or sellers in a bar. Why? Because again, I know you have to visualize it till we get to the slide, but bottoming tails and topping tails are what? They're battles. They're battles that are being fought inside of a bar so if you have a bar that was all red 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 and then it leaves a bottoming tail back up what happened there was a battle being fought inside that bar where initially originally the sellers were in control but then the buyers began to take over see the battle was fought and you're going to go with the tail the direction of the tail most of the time depending on how big the tail is okay Expanding range candle bodies tell us buying or selling power is being ignited or exhausted depending on where it is happening, right? So if you see a range expansion bar, wide range range expansion bar, but it's the eighth bar up, that's an exhausting move. That's the end of the move. But if you see a range expansion bar or a wide range bar, the first or second bar of the move, that is expanding the range of the move, not ending the range of the move, if that makes sense, okay? Narrow or narrowing range candle bodies tell us volatility is low or momentum is decreasing. Narrow or narrowing range candles. Think about that, what I'm saying here. We just talked about wide range. Now think about narrow range. Narrow range candles, okay? Say it's a Tesla and a normal bar is a dollar and this bar is 25 cents. Well, there's clearly a bit of a stalemate there, right? There's clearly a back and forth and the momentum is slowing down. But what does that momentum mean? Well, where it happens matters. Is that momentum slowing down because it's taking a break and getting ready to continue in the same direction? Or is the momentum decreasing because one side is losing power and the stock might reverse. So these are the things that we're gonna talk about, okay? So this is basically an outline of what we're gonna talk about. But before we do, uh, just a quick, and I'm gonna go over this quick, a quick review of last week. We talked about it last week. We talked about 50 and 100% retracements. And again, I'm gonna go through this quick, okay, very quick. We talked about 40 to 60% or 50% being the ideal retracement. If we did 25, it hadn't rested long enough and we might question the strength because the stock might run out of gas. It might bounce back up but fail quickly because it didn't rest long enough. If it does a 100% retracement, we're questioning the strength. We're going, well, why didn't the buyers step up sooner? Why are they looking for discounts? Why are the buyers looking to buy off the bottom? Well, they're clearly not convinced this stock is gonna put in a new high. Right, think about it this way, guys. It, it, what, I don't care what it is that you're buying. If the demand is huge, you'll pay up for it, right? You will. If the demand is massive, you'll pay up for it. But if you think the stock or the product or the car or whatever is going to decrease in value, what, were you, what are you gonna do? You'll just wait for a lower price. You'll come back next week and buy it cheaper. Well, that's what happens on 100% retracement. You'll just wait for lower prices because you don't believe this is the bottom. So we looked at the 25%, it just hasn't rested long enough. The 100%, it's not that it won't bounce, it's just that the bounce is much more questionable. So the 50% is kind of that Goldilocks area that we talked about, right? Uh, and we went through this last week as well. Retracement levels are used to measure the strength or weakness of a move. They help us determine if the current trend will continue or reverse the level of retracement helps us determine this, right? That 50%, 25%, 100%. It also helps us determine the odds of success. So in short, retracement levels help keep our expectations in check. They keep us objective. Given the prior pivot compared to the current pullback, we can surmise what might likely happen next. So now, let's dig into this stuff. Let's get in, okay? Retracement comments. I told you guys a few minutes back we're going to need some participation today, all right, because we're going to have a few slides like this where there's just nothing but charts on the slide. Normally, I mark them up and give you all the answers. Don't worry. There's slides like that, too. Um, but today, I want to take a look at these three. Number one, number two, number three is what we'll call them from left to right. One, two, three. So if we look on the left, 
I want you guys to talk to me here about the five red bars. I want you to talk to me about those five red bars. What are some comments that you're seeing on these five red bars to the left? What, what's the thought process? What are you thinking here as you see these red bars? Okay, now again, look at it as a collective. Look at all five of these red bars. Okay, we'll get to the green bars in a minute, but just look at those red bars to the left. Sequential pullback, range is shorter, not much overlap, decreasing momentum. Ooh, good job. Smooth downtrend. Okay, selling momentum is slowing. Good. Yes, yes, yes. You guys are listening. I love it when you guys listen. This is exactly what we're looking for. And many people made the comment. They're decreasing in size and selling momentum is slowing down. This is exactly the comment I'm looking for. If you look at the first two bars, big time red. I mean, it's a wide range red bar. It's a wide range red bar. But now the bars begin to get narrower, but also the lows are not nearly as significant. If you take a look at the first bar to the second bar, that new low is very significant. Hence, it's a wide range bar. But as we decrease the overlap is getting a little bit bigger right and the new lows are getting a little bit shallower so if the momentum is decreasing we can surmise the sellers are getting tired now we don't have enough information yet we don't have enough to know are they tired but still weak and gonna go lower after a resting period or are they just exhausted tired and they're going to bounce? Those are two different things. So you can be tired, but get enough rest to continue your journey. Or you could just be flat exhausted and that's it, the buyers are gonna come in and take over. We don't know that yet, but perfect. You guys are dead spot on on that. Then what we have is a green bar and there's a level of penetration on this green bar that's about 80 or 90% right there. So that's a concern for the sellers because we went from sellers losing some momentum but still being in control to buyers having a large impact on that prior bar. And then the next bar followed through and continued higher. And then you get a red bar. You think, okay, sell set up, fair enough. And then a green bar and then red bars. So now we look at this and I look at this double bottom right here as potentially viable. Obviously, we're not looking at enough information, but on the limited information we have, I'm looking at this as potentially viable, okay? Why? Because we're retesting an area where the stock was tired previously and bounced previously. On top of it, the move down here was a relatively smooth, controlled move. We didn't really put in a significant new low. Now, I'm not saying I would buy it. I'm simply saying this is starting to indicate a possible change of trend. Now, why might that be important? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, I might want to consider the next buyable pullback. The next buyable pullback would be something where you put in a higher high, right? So this green bar is, is impressive, but we need to put in a higher high up to here, right? then maybe buy the next pullback to support, okay? Then on top of it, if you happen to be short, you know now, after this green bar right here, you know now, the move lower is almost definitely finished, okay? The move lower is almost definitely finished. The question is, in which time frame do you like to see those figures? Well, in which time frame are you trading, Daniel? We don't ever trade in a vacuum. So you're always going to look at a higher time frame for your bias than a lower time frame for your entry. We talked about that, oh, two or three weeks ago, maybe three. This could be a one-minute chart. It could be a yearly chart. It doesn't matter. The concept does not change. So I want to repeat because it's really important. If you're short and you see this green bar after a double bottom, there's a 90% chance the bottom has been set. Now, again, if JWoww decides to speak in the market tanks, that's different. I'm not talking about extreme cases, okay? So if you see the double bottom and then the wide range green bar, that's it. I, I'd lower your stop right here. Now, if you're an all or nothing trader, then you're gonna just stick, stick it, right? Take it on the chin. Now, would I buy this? Probably not, but what does it allow me to do? Project into the future. 
The projection here simply for me says a higher high with a pullback to newly formed support is an area I would be very interested in buying this. See, right now, this here, this area, this pivot, that's resistance. That's resistance. But if we break above it, the ceiling becomes the floor. So now I'm looking at a possible transitionary buy setup because of the slowing momentum and the double bottom retest. So when you guys look at stuff and go, wow, how did Unwall know it was going to bounce there? He's taking the same concept that we just spoke about, looking at trend lines, looking at moving averages, looking at overall strength and weakness and combining with what we just talked about. And all of a sudden we're getting those multiple concepts to come together to improve our accuracy. Okay. Now let's move to the middle or else we're going to be here all day. I just spent like six minutes talking about one single one chart. All right. Red bars. We have six of them. Talk to me. Chart number two, just the red bars, just the red bars. What do you see? How do you feel? Talk to me. Ignore everything else, just the six red bars. How do you feel? The last bar is pretty big. Overlap, wait for a sell sell. Heavy selling, strong sellers, but sloppy. Now remember, you can't see the future. You can't see the red bar, the green bar bounce. You can only see these six bars. Okay, and I suppose I should probably just do something like this and just make it a lot easier for you guys. Okay, all right, just makes it a bit easier for you guys. I don't know about you guys, but personally, I don't see any real reason yet to feel comfortable about this stock bouncing. Yes, it is down six bars, and that is a concern. But every one of these bars is a pretty good size bar. We have a bar right here that should have moved this stock higher. See the fourth bar, one, two, three, four. This completely engulfed that red bar. It gapped up, gapped over a red bar and completely sold off. That's, some, that's basically confirmation of weakness, correct? A stock that would gap above a red bar, completely sells off, puts in a new low, is confirmation of weakness, and the next day what happens, it goes lower and goes lower. So the only thing that we can hang our hat on here is it's six bars down. But there is no indication yet that this move is finished. There's no slowing of momentum. There's no like super wide range, like blow off bottom. We don't have any volume here, so I can't see if there's a huge volume spike. So this is a step back and wait situation, right? It's a step back and wait. Sellers are clearly still in control, but let's just wait. No reason to say, oh, it's six bars down. I'm gonna start bidding for the bottom to buy it, right? But isn't it making progress lower on each bar? Um, making progress. Well, it's making progress. I mean, each bar is a good size bar, but we don't have enough information to call a bottom, right? It's, so it's too extended to initiate a new short, certainly too weak to try to go long. And you sit there and you ask yourself, well, this is wait and see. More information is needed before I get serious about this thing, okay? so. That gap to me right here, that fourth bar, that is a very big deal. That gap should have set the low. It absolutely should have set the low here on the fourth bar, and it didn't. It went much lower. So then it, the stock comes back in. Buyers step up a couple bars, but then you get a topping tail. Guys, what are you doing here? Right where my cursor is, topping tail, red bar, what's the thought process now? Topping tail, red bar, what's the thought process now? Talk to me. Lower prices, sell setup. I don't see really anything wrong with this. I mean, this did almost exactly what you'd want a sell setup to do, right? I mean, you're sitting here going, wait a second. So it bounced a couple bars. Okay, cool. It needed a break. We're, we, it, that's exactly what the stock needed. A rest, topping tail. Great. Sellers are still in control. The stock, remember, this topping tail suggests at one point in time, at one point in time, this was a green bar. Remember, read, visualize inside the bar. At one point in time, this, this was a green bar. Sellers immediately came in. 
The bar leaves a topping tail suggesting selling pressure, leaves a red bar suggesting selling pressure, and about a 50, 40 to 60 percent, 50 percent retracement on a stock that we know is already weak. This is sell setup. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's a sell setup. See, you can't see the future. You don't know any of that stuff. But in real time, that's a sell setup. And it's a, it's a good one from what we see, from the information we have. Okay, And then it continues lower, puts in another retest with a bottoming tail, and then this. This is now a concern. It's a concern because a stock that's truly weak should at least put in a lower low. Right? It should put in at least a lower low. How big of a low? Well, that's to be determined. But it should at least put in the fact that it put in a bottoming tail at the exact same spot buyer stepped up before is a concern. Does this mean it's going to fail? No. But this green bar certainly has now become a problem. It's become a problem because the retracement is 50, 60% back into enemy territory on a stock that really should have put in a new low. This is what I call wait and see. Get the Gatorade out and drink a little hopium because there's nothing you can do here. There's nothing you can do here. You took a good sell setup. Everything you did was check, 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 buy the book. You did nothing wrong. It's, the trade starts out very nicely. Red bar, red bar, red bar, retesting the low. Everything looks good. But this wide range green bar puts a little bit of a kink in the works. You cannot act on this. It's not enough information. Okay? So this red bar, could, the next bar could just put in a little doji and continue lower. Right? Now, if this green bar was like an 80% retracement, then yeah, I'd tell you, you can fork it. It's over. It's over. But being like a 50% retracement, it's too hard to say. Now, I agree, I'm concerned. There's no question there's concern, but there's no actionable concern. I hope that makes a difference. You can't act on this. You're just gonna have to sit there and take it. Why did I put this up here? Why did I draw it this way? Because this is real life trading. This really happens. And you're sitting there going, shit, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do about this? The answer is there's nothing you can do about it. Wait for the next bar to give you more information. Okay, this is one of those conundrums of trading. We don't have to know everything all the time. It's nice, but we just we can't know everything all the time. You're it's it. You're in for the ride. You have a target. You have a stop. That's it. Now, what about this to the right? Let's do this one a little quicker because we'll be here for the next four hours. If not, a lot more slides to get through. Right? These red bars, five red bars. Talk to me. Five red bars on the right. Number three over here. Five red bars. One. Two, three, four, five. What do you see? How do you feel? Same as number one, still concerning. Momentum decreasing, momentum slowing, selling, slowing down. You're right. The commentary here should be very similar to number one. Decreasing momentum, decreasing range, overlap is getting much more significant right take a look at the new lows they're they're weaker lows they're not as strong as these lows up here the overlap here is about 60 percent the overlap here is not as much but even though the overlap is less it has a higher low now i want you to think about something we have the bars are decreasing in size which means sellers are getting tired and then we get to this last red bar, bar number five, and we have a pretty narrow range red bar with a higher low. That's a warning sign. Narrow range red bar, inside bar, higher low. Sellers are really getting tired at this point. Okay. Now again, it's not an actionable event. It's just helping you to potentially predict the future. Sellers getting a little bit tired, buyers probably sneaking in, and the range expansion is gone, right? There's no more range expansion. The bottom is likely coming, but we don't know yet. It hasn't set a bottom, but we're thinking, hmm, if I could get a bounce and a retest off this, 
I might look to go long at some point. So that's what we get. We get a wide range green bar that takes out one, two, three. Three red bars, that's a very potent green bar. You took out three bars of sellers. Another green bar, this is a much tougher sell setup. Much tougher because again of the slowing momentum right here. So when this pulls back and does not put in a new low, now I know my stop loss needs to be here. If it put in a new low, everything changes, but it didn't. And then the next bar is green. So I'm, am I looking to buy here? I think it's too aggressive, personally. I think it's too aggressive to buy. I'll wait for a higher high and buy the pullback on the higher low. And guess what? If it doesn't give it to me, oh well, I won't take it. And this is a theme I want to get you in your guy's head. If the stock doesn't give you exactly what you want, walk away. It's like, I don't know, I can't think of a good analogy. It's like going to a car dealership and saying, I will absolutely not pay more than $50,000 for a car. I don't care what the salesman says. I don't care how good the deal is. I'm not paying more than 50 grand. You walk out spending 60. That's a problem. If you can't get the deal you want, you walk away. If you can't get the pattern you want exactly how you want it, walk away. And this is the difference between a newer trader and an experienced trader. There's two differences here. One, the discipline. That's difference number one. The experienced trader has the discipline and, and they walk away. Okay. Number two is the experienced trader is already envisioning what they want to see before it happens. So I'm looking at this double bottom going, great. I like what it's doing, but I'm not ready yet. If you show me a higher high and a higher low, I'm in. It's like saying, hey, if you give me the sunroof and the cool wheels, I'll buy the car. But unless or until you do that, I am not touching it. Does that make sense? So you're envisioning on the double bottom like, okay, I'm, I'm, it's so far it's giving me what I want. The momentum has slowed down. The sellers are getting tired. The stock bounced. Now it retested. Now I need a higher high and a higher low. Give it to me and I'll take it. Don't and I won't. That's it. Make your life simple. Make it simple. Don't say, there, yeah, but kind of well. No, you're talking yourself into something. See, right now, you're calm while you're watching this because there's no money in it. right? You haven't bought the stock down here. So trust your calm self. Let it give you exactly what you asked for. <laughs> yeah, the floor mats. Let me talk to the manager. Okay? So... Let's continue this. We're going to have to speed this up a little. My goodness, I think I could spend 20 minutes on one slide. I can, I guess. All right. Analyzing candlesticks. The level of supply is decreasing. Okay. There's eight pictures here. We don't have time to spend a minute on each of these. All right. The first one is just your garden variety pullback. Red bar, red bar, red bar. Okay. We'll use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now we're on number two. We have a doji bar here. Okay. What does this tell me? It says, hey, for the first time in a three to four bar move, buyers have decided they're gonna step up a little bit. So this is the first time that a challenger has arisen and it's actually giving the sellers trouble, right? The sellers were clearly in control here, here, and here. And all of a sudden it's like, whoa. So while yes, while yes, we are still putting in lower lows and lower highs, and we're still in a downtrend. Something has to be questioned, and that question is the sellers. Wait, wait a second. You're sitting there literally asking them, wait, you've been dominating this game for three quarters. What's going on in the fourth quarter? You're losing some momentum. Buyer step up. It's a stalemate, but it's not really a stalemate. It would be a stalemate normally on a doji bar, but because the sellers used to be in control, you have to give a slight edge to buyers because they've made their first impression on the sellers. Next, now you go, same three bars, all th the first three bars are the same on all of them, but now you get a green bar. Yes, it's a lower low, but it's actually a green bar. It's a little bit different than bar two, right? Box two, chart two, okay? So now we're getting a little bit more buying support, right? The buyers are winning a little bit more. Go to bar or box three or four. Sorry, I'm losing my mind here. What do we have here? This is a little bit different, but 
Is it bearish or bullish? See, we have a stock that actually puts in a higher low. And this was a green bar, right? This is a green bar. And it's about an 80 or 90% retracement. Okay? And then it leaves the topping tail. So basically, for a few minutes, you're sitting there going, perfect. The buyers are stepping up. The buyers are stepping up. The buyers are stepping up. They're putting a huge dent into the sellers. That level and depth of penetration is high here, right? It's like 90%. And then all of a sudden, down, 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 topping tail, topping tail, topping tail. This is a problem, isn't it? The problem is twofold. One, why didn't the buyers basically finish what they started? Why didn't they consolidate what they started and stay strong? That's a problem. That's edge to the sellers. Okay. The next part, though, that's a problem is for the sellers. The problem is for both sides here. And the reason the problem is for sellers is because you put in a higher low and the bar is green. So how much weakness could it really have? Because if it had tremendous weakness, it would have still put in a lower low. True? Yes, it left a topping tail, and we're definitely questioning the strength of the buyers at this point. But I'm still questioning the strength of the sellers at the same time. Because they didn't put in a lower low. This is a tough spot. <laughs> when you're looking at this, you're sitting there going, hmm. The best thing you can see here is the next bar is green and takes out the topping tail. This is a very indecisive bar and neither side is really winning here, right? Okay, next, number five, red, 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 bottoming tail, love it. Why? Because it used to be red and the sellers used to be in control. You're looking for the fourth time in a row, one, two, three, four, the fourth time in a row sellers are in control and you're like, okay, sellers got this. Nope, I don't think so. Here, hold my beer. The buyers come right back up. Bottoming tail, bottoming tail, bottoming tail, green bar. This is nice. It's what you want to see. You want to see it end in that upper range where it's green because it had a battle, a tug of war that was all red and it ended green. Okay. Now, number six, very similar to number three. But what's the difference between number three and number six? What's the difference? Right? What's the difference? Exactly. The higher low. Exactly right. There was not enough energy or strength, or in this case, weakness. There wasn't enough weakness to put in a new low. Now, remember, up until this point, sellers are in complete control. Control, control, control. Complete control. And then all of a sudden, this green bar comes along. Like, whoa, whoa, what happened here? Where'd you guys come from? Yeah, we're here. We've been here the whole time. We just, we got a little bit stronger. We got a good night's sleep last night, whatever it is, but they're stronger now. This is a potent bar. Go to number seven, red, 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 lower low, but the bar is bigger. So number six and seven are kind of interesting to me because this one has a higher low or an equal low, and this one has a lower low, but it still is a 50% penetration and it's a wider, bit of a wider range green bar, right? And then the last one, number eight. Lower low, but the level and depth of penetration is about 70 or 80%. It does not, does not leave a topping tail, okay? This line is representing 50%. Just so you know, this line represents 50% retracement. This has a 70%, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so the level of supply is decreasing here. All right, we have to move on. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Okay, now, one of the important things on this topic, man, this could be like an entire course, today's lecture. Um, one of the things to consider also is how stocks move in these directions. And it's one of the things we've been talking about. So a couple of slides ago, we talked about momentum slowing down. Right. And the bars, the overlap getting bigger and the candlesticks getting smaller. Well, on the left, this is a picture of certainty. This is a smooth sequential move down lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low. And the move back up is the same. You see, this smooth move down creates a space. We call this space void. You want this. You want those V bottoms. This is a picture of uncertainty. Okay. 
This is a picture of uncertainty, all right? Red, 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 gap up, red, oh, what's going on here? You sit there and you go, wait a second, hold on, wait a second. Big red bar, number three, bar number three, and you get gapped into and put in a new high. That's bullish. But then the next day you gap down and put in a new low. Oh, shit. Which is it? Is it strong? Is it weak? Because then the next day you get a green bar, green bar that takes out the red bar, and the next day a red bar that takes out the green bar. This, excuse the language, but this is a shit show. This is something you want to stay away from. Do not touch this thing. Now, I get it. The first day it may be gaps green. You might trade this on this day. That is fine. The next day you may trade it on this day. That is fine. But you are not swing trading this thing. This is, this is fits. This is trouble. Okay? And you're right. The market does act like this sometimes. It makes our lives difficult. We want pictures of certainty. When you see pictures of uncertainty, stay away. Why? Because there's thousands of other stocks you can choose from. Why do you have to pick this one? It's that ego. Why do you have to be right? Just move along. You know what they say in sales? You can be right or you can be rich. They say that. That's a common mantra in sales. You can be right or you can be rich. I'd rather be rich. Put the ego in the closet. Just take the easy money. We just saw this, okay? Different retracements. Which is the better reversal? Well, we, we saw this earlier. Wide bar, wide bar, narrow, 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 and look at the lows. See the lows? Very, wow, market is ripping right now, right? See the lows? Wide range bars, significant new low. Narrower range bars, not significant new lows. Momentum is slowing. Not huge fear, no ending bar, right? So there's not a lot of fear here. And there's no wide range anywhere. This first bar is not happening on the last bar. There's, no, there's nothing really here that, that just emphatically says that sellers are in control. The momentum is just slowing. But the issue here, right, the issue here is the stock might just go in a protracted narrow range resting period. We don't know. We still need more information. But what we do know the so momentum is slowing, sellers are decreasing. Over here, starts off narrow, gets a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger, and then bam, momentum is increasing, range expanded, followed by an ending bar. So what I'm showing you here is while this certainly looks like a bottom is being put in, there is no huge shock value reversal here. Over here, you basically flip the red bars, right? Just flip them upside down, and it starts off slow but ends with a bang. And if you get a volume spike on the wide range bar and a green engulfing bar, now you're probably ready to buy. You don't need the double bottom retest. You don't need the higher high and the higher low because the stock already gave you the ending move, the range expansion, ending bar on volume, assuming we had volume, and then the next bar is a turnaround bar. The bottom has been set. Over here, we need more information. We need the stock to bounce, pull back, give us a higher low and a higher high, all right? Now, let's look at it a little differently. Change gears slightly. Let's pull out a breakout. So, so far we've been talking about bottoms. Well, we're gonna do that on this slide, but we're also gonna talk about a breakout. This was a Jeff Yates trade from last month. This was a Jeff Yates trade. Okay, now, what do we have? Red, 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 red. Bottoming tail, doji bar, bottoming tail. Do you see where we ended the previous day? There's a level or an area of support, okay, at 64.60. This is an area that is absolutely buyable. Yeah, that little topping tail puts a kink in the works, the third bar here, okay, but this is buyable pulled back to an area where the stock bounced before, then leaves a bottoming tail and a green bar. But then what happens? You get a bottoming tail green bar, moves up wide range green bar, and then goes chop, 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 chop. But it's not just your garden variety of chop. This thing chops around, but leaves what? A big bottoming tail. What happened? A battle was fought here. Buyers and sellers got after it, and the buyers won. Next couple bars, buyers hang around. Red bar comes in. You get a little bit concerned because 
the red bar takes out the bottoming tail green bar and you're like, ooh, maybe the sellers are actually making an impression. Maybe the stock's not as strong as I thought, maybe. But then the next bar is green and then boom, this is a, almost a double shakeout. It makes the breakout better. Why does the wide range bar make it better? Because it proves there are buyers here and it takes out the high of the day or gets pretty close to. So the wide range bar does what? It's a range expansion bar to the high of the day. So we're taking out all the previous sellers. This bar right here takes out all the previous sellers. This bar right here, the bottoming tail, reconfirms who's in control, the buyers. And this bar double reconfirms who's in control, the buyers. This pattern, this trade is phenomenal. It's outstanding. This is what you're looking for when you trade. Don't need to be the first in. Don't let your ego trade for you. Let the stock continue to confirm, confirm, confirm. And if it goes before confirmation, let it go. If it goes before the confirmation, let it go. There are thousands to choose from. You only need one or two good ones a day. There are thousands to choose from. You only need one or two good ones per day. Get that into your head. One to three trades a day keeps the J-O-B away. Get it into your head. Say it loud and say it proud. There are thousands of stocks to choose from. You need to find one to two to three a day. That is it. Okay? Now, this is a slide you have seen, okay? And we have a lot of arrows on this slide, okay? You're exactly right, Aaron. I take one or two high quality ones over four or five questionables. So let's discuss. I really wanted to get tons of audience participation, but we spent so much time on that slide, I think we're gonna have to just kind of move quickly. We have a stock that gapped up and it moved higher two bars and left the bottoming tail. My thought process here is higher prices, okay? Higher prices. We get a bottoming tail after a big time pullback. One, two, three, four, five, six bars. Let me ask you guys a question. This arrow, second arrow right here, bottoming tail, buyable, yes or no? Buyable right here, yes or no? We're gonna do this quickly, or we're not gonna do it at all. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, yes, 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 yes. I would wait, yes. On volume, yeah, huge bottoming tail. Wait, yes. Volume on bottoming tail helps to predict if it will roll over or continue. More information for me. Hmm, interesting. So we got a lot of yeses, a few not sures, a few no's. Okay, okay. Not going to say a word. Next arrow, third arrow, shortable sell setup. Yes or no? Okay, let me draw a line here. Okay. Shortable, yes or no? Third third arrow, right here. Right there. Yes, 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 no, yes, 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 yes. Depends on expectations. Yes, 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 not for me. Mostly yes is a few no's littered in there, okay? All right, cool, don't worry. This one, fourth arrow all the way down here, viable. Fourth arrow. Hold on, let me put some dots in. Okay. Fourth arrow, buyable. No, yes, yes. No, yes, no. Double bottom, never. No, 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 no. Big capital no's. I was getting a concern for a second. <laughs> okay. All right. 50-50. Mostly no's on that one. I'm going to have to remember what you guys said. All right. Okay. There's the arrows. All right. Fifth arrow. Short, short this right here. Fifth arrow right there. Short this right there. Fifth arrow, short this. Yes or no? I have yes, 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 no. First and foremost, before we continue, do you guys understand what makes the market move now? Do you guys understand what makes the market move now? We, don't, we can't even get a consensus amongst ourselves, right? We can't even get a consensus amongst ourselves. Bad traders. <laughs> Junior, that's good. That's funny. Uh, all right. Okay. We're on to the sixth arrow. We got to hurry up here. We gotta, we're on to the sixth arrow. Sixth arrow. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one right here, right there. Okay. Buy or... Yes or no? 
Buyable, yes or no? Buyable, yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. Wait, need volume. No, yes, no, no, not yet. Yes, no. No, no, wait, no. Okay, all right. Hold on. Seventh arrow, shortable, right there. Seventh arrow, shortable. No, 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 sixth is good, no, yes. No, yes, yes, no, no, no. You guys are all over the place, man. The last couple arrows, two or three hours, you guys are all over the place. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, last one, last one. This, this arrow right here, is this the seventh arrow? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's the eighth arrow, eighth arrow. Okay, eighth arrow. Viable, yes or no? Remember, you can't see the future. Yes or no? Aaron, yes. Robert, no. Scalp, yes, 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 yes. Yes, let's go. Yes, no. <laughs> no, no, yes. <laughs> All right. Let's move along. I'm not going to give you the answers. Let's move along. I'm kidding. All right. You love these participation lectures? Well, it's good. People are participating. It's awesome. So now... Let's see what I thought about it yesterday when I put this together. Okay. Start with the first one here. I didn't give a comment on whether it was buyable. I just said the next reversal is likely shortable. Shouldn't shortable be one word? I think it is. Okay. I forgot to ask myself if this was buyable. I think you could pro probably buy this for a scalp. If you were going to do an option, oh, there's no question you could take calls on this. There's a 100% chance you could take calls on this long. That bottoming tail is very, very potent, especially if it has volume. So, yeah, I think you could probably scalp it. But the key here, and it's very important, it's very important, so pay attention. You are not expecting a retest of the high of the day. You are not expecting a retest of the high of the day. The expectation here is a bounce failure. The expectation here is a bounce failure. To be very clear, okay? You broke the low significantly. Something happened between the open of this stock and here. You have to ask yourself, what changed? The stock gapped up and huge buyers stepped up. What changed? It's a big time question. You get the gap up, buyers, buyers, the first two, three bars a day, and all of a sudden the sellers came in and said, no, I don't think so. What changed? You can no, you can no longer have a bullish bias on this stock unless you're scalping the bounce. Scalp the bounce, cool. Call options, cool. Fine, no problem. Next, very much shortable. That means yes very much shortable on the sell setup here. Why? It gave you that 50% retracement. It's proving to you. Look at the momentum of the buyer slowing down. Bottoming tail, big green bar, big green bar, smaller, 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 doji, doji, boom. Trading it down to that area, down to that area right there, right? Okay. Now, expect the bounce, but not buyable here. Again, if you're looking for a, a a very short scalp, like a dirty little scalper, unmall scalp, then perhaps, perhaps you're sitting on some support, maybe it'll bounce, but there's no question the stock is showing weakness. You would traditionally never buy this, right? You would traditionally never buy this. Next, very much shortable, okay? Very much shortable. Why? Lower high, lower low, another lower low, another lower high. Right, you're going to short it down into here. Why? Well, we do have some support over here. You can see it on the left, way over here on the left. We have some support there. We have some support here. But I like this red bar here. My risk to reward, I don't know what it is, but it's a decent area to short. Buyable, aggressive, but potentially buyable. Why? Well, it's potentially buyable because it's a double bottom retest, but it's not just at support here, it's also at support from over here, right? Okay, but it's still aggressive. Why is it aggressive? There's two reasons why it's aggressive. You guys tell me the two reasons why it's aggressive. 
It's buyable, but it's aggressive. Tell me why. Tell me why. It's two reasons it's aggressive. Don't just give me the one. Give me both. It's probably below the moving average. It's below the trend line. Mm -hmm. Aaron, number one. It's in a downtrend. Okay, that's number one. Again, we can talk about trend lines and moving averages. Cool, but it's in a downtrend. Okay, and I'll give you a hint. We just talked about it like two slides ago, three slides ago. We just talked about it. You got No one has given the second answer yet. You're all right on the downtrend. You're all right on the moving average. You're all right on the, you know, the trend line. You're all right. But none of you have said what I'm, what I'm wanting and needing to hear. Do we have to go back to the slide? Here, I'll flash it really fast. I'll flash it really fast. Do, 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 do. Okay, we're, we're gone. We're back. Okay. Okay, we're back. Oh, finally, Sean. It's way too choppy. Look at this crap on the left. Look at this garbage. Look at this right here. Red bar, green bar, red bar, green bar, doji bar, red bar. Look at that area right, right there. Right there. Look at that. Why do you want to buy up into that? Yeah, you'll get a smooth move till about, oh, right where it got choppy. It's just crap. Right, so it's in a downtrend. It's below the trend line. It's below the moving average. It's got all kinds of congestion to the left. I just, to the left, that's right. You don't go against Beyonce. Right here, tough shortable. Why? Why is this tough shortable? It's tough shortable because it put in a higher high and now the stock has put in a double to triple bottom. It's put in a little bit of a double bottom plus there's support over here. And this ends up being the best short of all. <laughs> but this is trading, right? So this is a tough shortable. If you want to scalp it for a brief scalp, yeah. Buyable with scalp expectations. <gasps> Why? Why scalp expectations? Okay. This last one here. Buyable with scalp expectations. Why? Why do I mention scalp expectations? into an area where buyers have previously stepped up. Okay, cool, expecting a little bit of a bounce, but I said scalp expectations. Yep, it's 100% retracement and, and it's still in a downtrend and 100% retracement, still in a downtrend and double top. There it is, Bertle, double top. If things go well, if things go well, I'm expecting it to stop right there. Right. If things go well, I'm expecting it to stop right there. So I do like the smooth pullback. I do like that. I do like the double, triple bottom. I like it. I like the green bar. I like a lot of things about it. But I'm still in a downtrend in a stock that's proven to be weak all day long. And there's a, now a double top. So my expectations need to be tempered. Didn't say you can't take it but you're tempering your enthusiasm. You're a 3RO or nothing trader, this is a tough trade to take, right? Tough trade to take. All right, let's move on, moving along. Okay, what do we have here? Red, red, whoops, press the button. Red, 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 red. But it says, what is this? I mean, just this area, don't, don't take those specific three bars. Just look at this, what is this? This collection of red bars what is it volume 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 what is it yeah it looks parabolic it looks climactic right that's what it looks like it looks like there's a heck of a lot of sellers in here in a big time way and every bottoming tail gets shorted right bottoming tail here first bottoming tail red bar next 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 bottoming tail red bar every bottoming tail gets sold into right every single one and we're also down one two three four five six seven eight bars and we have volume you can see the volume spike at the bottom big time volume increased volume increased selling pressure so so how do you feel when you retest the climactic low. What are your thoughts? See where this arrow is? What are your thoughts? 
Talk to me. Talk to me. What are your thoughts? You just have a climactic move lower on huge wide range bars on volume. Absolutely no buy, says Yaroslav. Like the bottoming tail, interesting watch for transition, watch for the next higher or low. So the thoughts here are, how aggressive do you want to be? Right? How aggressive do you want to be? Because when you look at the climactic nature of this move, the parabolic nature of this move, and you look at the volume, and then you look at this, it did not put in a new low. It put in an equal low with a bottoming tail. This is actually a pretty viable area, right? It's a pretty viable area. Now, the negative here is the congestion, the topping tail, the red bar. There's, like, there's a lot of crap to the left. But despite the crap to the left, there should be a high level of confidence the low has been set. So and this is the conundrum as a trader. Here is the conundrum as a trader. You have a high level of confidence that a low has been set. But man, it's tough to buy it because I don't get the volume spike I want on the bottoming tail and there's tons of overlap to the left. So we should defer when in doubt, probably stay out, right? So again, I have a high level of confidence that this, is, this low has been set. And you could still buy it and say, yeah, but you're probably going to go for a choppy ride. Most likely it's going to be a choppy ride. And it was. It was a choppy ride. It bounced back up, chop, chop, chop. And then finally you're starting to get, you know, a little bit more follow through, okay? But I'm going to go back to what I said before. If there's something that doesn't feel right, something you don't like, something you're not sure about, step back, paper trade it. Take a picture of it, put it in your PowerPoint, put it in wherever and review it later. Stay away. It's your hard earned money. You worked your ass off for that money. Don't just nonchalantly, cavalierly just throw it into the market. So while I do feel good about this bottom being set, there's, a, there's questions too. And the questions would probably keep me out. But if someone did take it, I could turn and see some reasons why they took it. It's not like some pie in the sky idea, but yeah, still some concern. All right, next pullback. Thoughts, quickly. Thoughts, right here, this arrow. Right here. This arrow right there. Yaroslav says, best buy on the chart. Watching, not buying. Higher, low. Okay, it's a higher low. 50% retracement, buyable, somewhat smooth pullback, higher low. Aaron says buy. Now you're looking at a double top. Ooh. See how it takes a group to get all the things out there? Right? It takes a group of people to get all of the things out there. We put in a double top. That's a problem. This is a problem. If this is truly a climactic parabolic move, I should have put in a higher high here. And we didn't. Yeah, we put in a higher low, but talk to me about this pullback. Ugh, yuck. Bottoming tail is bottoming tail, but red bar gets completely ignored. Green bar, green bar gets completely ignored by the red bar. I mean, on the way back up, this is a problem. Now remember, we'll do it again. You don't know the future. So stop acting like you do. It's tough. So again, this to me, to me, harkens back to the same thoughts as this. I think the low has been set, but man, it could just chop around in a range for a while. Do I want to put my hard earned money into this? Yes, I believe the low has been set, but I might just be sitting here with dead money, right? Dead money, possibly. That's the way I view that. I view that as a tough one because you could argue to buy it and put the stop at the low and you might be right, but it also could be stuck dead money for hours. Then when we finally put in the higher high and the higher low, I'm all about it. 
You give me this little pseudo three or four bar play right there, put the stop under here because it's coming off a of climactic, then that's a much better place. But even that, even that got choppy. Even that got choppy. All right. Moving along. Moving along. Oh, man. I should divide this into two. Should be like part one and part two. Maybe I'll do that. I'll cut this lecture in half. Part one, part two. Uh, all right. Okay. This stock pulled back and ripped one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars in a row up. Rip, 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 rip. Buyers, 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 buyers. Little bit of congestion, rips higher. Okay. What do we see? I'm giving you the answers because we don't have time for you guys to type them in. The second half of this buyer's move, this big move up here on the left, momentum is waning. Red bars are coming in, topping tails, doji bars, smaller candles, exactly right. The momentum is definitely slowing down here, okay? We get a pullback to support and we bounce. But when we bounce, we do not put in an equal high or a higher high on this bounce right here. We do not. Supply is building. We pull back. We pull back. We put in an equal low here. We've retested. We bounce. What do we do? Retest the prior pivot high, but we don't break it. Supply is building. This is that stage three tug of war that we talk about. The sellers, or sorry, sorry, the buyers were clearly in control on the left. No question. But now, now it's all the novice traders getting in up here. Jared, it's only nine bars up. I think I should buy the high. And then they get away with it. See, see, see. <laughs> anyway, right? So over here, it's that tug of war battle. Buyers and sellers. Supply is building. Selling pressure is building. Stock pulls back. Support. Tanks. Why did it tank under support? You're probably reading it, but why did it tank under support? Obviously, because there's more sellers than buyers, but that aside, because this move up created this void. The big move up leaves no support below, right? This big move up left nothing here. It just went up, 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 up. Once a smooth created demand area, this was created by buyers. This demand area was created by buyers. Once this smooth demand area fails, there's nothing to stop it from moving lower. They fought the good fight. They fought the battle. Once you break below the green line, it is O-V-E-R, over, okay? That's it. And then the sellers come in, push it all the way back, and what happens? Demand is building, why? Because that's where demand happened before. Note, red, 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 red. Buyer stepping in, red bar, buyer stepping. This is the tug of war again. This is the buyers and sellers fighting it out. Demand is now building, move back up, okay? This is the thought process you need to go through to understand the next likely move of the market or a stock, okay? Now, do you guys remember this gem? Do you guys remember this gem? This is Mr. Singh, the master, the man, the myth, the legend. I can't even call him a man anymore. He's above that status now. He's legend, okay? He's legend. Do you guys remember this little 15 minute call option play on the cues? Cues one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars down into support, small shallow bounce. Wide range red bar right into support. Bounce. Look at the daily support. Bounce. Unmol's just looking at this going, hmm, 200 MA on the daily. Extended 15 minute into support. And again, the support could have happened at 292, right? It's a range. It's a range of support here. And he's like, all right, guys, call options on the queues. And you guys are like, what the, what? Boom. All right, guys, out for 50 cents. I'm going to go to the beach now. This is how it happens. This is how you take advantage of that. Aaron, I think you took the trade, right? This happened a week ago, maybe. Not even. I don't even remember. It's not that long ago, okay? Support on the daily. 
multiple time frame analysis. 200 MA on the daily. Pivot, what happened at the pivot? We bounced last time at that pivot. We're entering that area again, but this time on a micro time frame that is extended, 15 minutes extended into that area. It's not a three bar play because it's extended. It's not a three bar play because you're sitting at support. You're looking for a shallow bounce. Now, was he expecting 294 out of this? No. Give me a 50 cent. Give me a dollar bounce on the cues and I'll walk away. The expectation matters. The expectation matters. Okay? Yeah, made two grand in a few minutes. Done. I put it in here because it's basically everything we just talked about over the last five, six slides, but combined with expectation. The expectation wasn't to get 100% retracement. The expectation was to bounce back up into overhead supply at like 292, 293 and walk away. Dirty little scalper. He's not core trading this long. The expectation was a scalp long. Okay? Bam. MRNA, not that long ago. No, guys, I hope you see what I try to do here. There's a method to my madness. Sometimes what I say or do doesn't always make sense in your mind. But I've used Jeff's trade on NEM. I've used Unmall's trade on the Qs, and I've used MRNA. Why? Because a lot of people tell me or they comment, yeah, Jared, that, that slide's like two years old you used. No, it still happens today, every day. Everything we talk about is still relevant today. I've been doing this 18 years and it's been relevant then, and it's relevant today. So these last couple few slides are things that happened in the last week, okay? So we just talked about buyers, 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 buyers going up, 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 up. What happens? On the left, the buyers get a little tired, chops around, right? Selling pressure comes in, gap, maybe it's earnings, I don't know, moves up, chops around, pulls back, what happens? Double top. Selling pressure, bearish sentiment, supply, bounces, pulls back. There's support here. So this is an area that is very, very tough to trade this stock. Yes, I can tell you it's probably going lower, but it's so sloppy. I'm going to probably stay away from it. Just because I understand what's likely going to happen doesn't mean I have to trade it. So anyway, it pulls back, goes below moving average and here by the way by the way I didn't draw this on here but we could do it right here what's that let's make it I don't know make it pink you're breaking below the trend line right draw an uptrend line you're breaking below the trend line after a lower high after congestion breaking below the rising moving average and basically once you get under 170 Tim you're going to short this bad boy at 170. Maybe first targets the double bottom. And once it, we just talked about it two slides ago, this move up created this void down here. This move up created this void down here. Right? Crazy. Could you call this a level one gap? It's tough. The, the percentage there is big, right? It went from like 163 all the way up to 190-ish. I don't know. That's like a 20% gap on a $100 plus dollar stock, right? This one over here, if that's what you're talking about. But this stock, that's it. So why is this important? It's important because you don't have to trade the slop and the chop and the junk. But you have to know it's there. Why do you have to know it's there? Because at some point, assuming we are correct, the double top retest stage three is going to turn into a stage four. And when it does, I want to short the stock. I don't need to trade the stage three. But I need to know it's in a stage three. Because now that I know it's in a stage three, I just know when it gets under 170, it's over for mRNA. It's done. It's finished. Short it under 170. Swing trade it. Find an intraday trade. So again, it's not about necessarily trading it in this stage three. It's about knowing what's going to happen next. And it may take a week or two for that to happen. But it's on a watch list now. It's on a backup. It's on a swing list. This is how great traders trade. Okay. So, whew, these lectures are going to have to get shorter, my men and women and people. All right. Recap. A reversal candle's potency is measured by the depth or level of penetration of the prior candle. Okay. Tails on 
either, sorry, tails on candles either increase or decrease supply. Topping tails increase, bottoming tails decrease. We went through this. We saw it on that several charts. Expanding range candle bodies tell us buying or selling power is being ignited or exhausted. Wide range bars, range expansion bars. Narrow or narrowing range candles or bodies, narrow range bars, tell us volatility is low. This is a summary of everything we talked about. It was on the first or second slide, and now it's on the last slide. Okay? There was a lot to unpack there today, guys. A lot. I mean, we could have spent hours, plural, doing that today. A couple things I want to leave you with. You saw what bottoming tails and overlap and void do. Great. We learned that wonderful. But I want to leave you with this. If you aren't sure and it's not giving you exactly everything you asked for, step aside. Stand down. Walk away. There's just no reason. You know damn well what I'm talking about. The devil and angel on your shoulder, and the devil wins most of the time because the devil yells louder and the angel talks soft. But the devil is just chomping and chiming in on your ear. Take it, take it. You know you want to. You know you lost an R yesterday. You got to get that R back today. Oh my gosh, the mortgage is doing a week and you still need another 500 bucks. You got to take this trade. Stop. Stand down. Step back and go, whoa there, little guy. I'm in control of my destiny, not you. And I mean it, it's very hard to do in real time. It is, it's very hard to do. That's where the mindfulness comes in. That's where your accountability partner comes in. That's where the consequence system comes in. You stand down. And the worst thing that can happen is the trade works. And then you're like, damn it, I knew I should have taken it. You gotta step back and go, you know, I just don't need to be this aggressive right now. I'll wait for more confirmation. And if it doesn't give it, I'm okay with it. If it does, I'll take it. And if I don't find it today, I will find it tomorrow. Get my 20, 40, 60 trades a month, walk away. So I hope that you guys took that from this lecture as well as the technical side of things. All right. And the goal, obviously, is for you to be better traders. And one way to do it is not just new information. It's repetition of existing information. We all need repetition. That's how you get great, and that's how you turn into an unconsciously competent trader. Walking is unconscious competence for you. Breathing is unconscious competence. Trading needs to get to that point. You look at the chart, and it's like, I see it. That's it. I see it. Okay? So, I hope you guys enjoyed that lecture. Hope you learned a little bit. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week. Mm -hmm.